it was very emotional. Like Steve actually got mad. Like he couldn't stop swearing basically in between, um, in between segments because he was so upset the more he heard, the more people spoke, the more he got upset. And he was like, this has to stop. This has to stop. He's like, I know my show's not going to stop it, but I want people to see how bad it is. So, um, the experts were great. Some of the people's questions were great. Um, there were some people that kind of got over emotional, but it was people that weren't from Flint. Um, so I guess if people from outside are getting mad, good, because one, it's not okay what's happening to us, but they need to be prepared because it can happen to them. There was a couple of people, there was one person in particular, I wish Hatton spoke because he gave um, incorrect information to, um, to Steve Harvey and it, it upset Steve. And, you know, so I think the message is a little skewed because of that, but overall he was just furious. He was like, he was like, wait, you're still paying the bills. You still have to shower in this where are the FEMA tanks? You know, where are the big water buffaloes? You know, it's the same question everybody asks. Why isn't there more help? And then he was just like, your governor's stupid. <laughs> he was like, that is a very stupid man. And um, so, yeah. So for the most part, it was good. It was just very, very emotional. And I don't think he was expecting it to be that bad, to be honest with you. So I think he was taken aback by that. Um, so, yeah. So, and, and it went an hour and a half over, the taping did. <laughs> So um, he just, he had a lot to say and he was trying to give us like very good, positive, uplifting things to, to go home on, you know, that, you know, what to do, you know, obviously take care of yourself. Don't sit around and just wait for the government to take care of you, which of course we haven't been, you know, we've been fighting and not sitting around and waiting. And there's a lot that can be done in our community. And, you know, we all agree on that. So, and that's what we're doing. So that's, that was, so that was cool. How long was the bus ride to Chicago? We had a great bus driver. We actually had a $1.1 million bus. It was the MSU team bus. So that sucker was comfy. I still don't sleep on vehicles. So I sat next to Lena from Food and Water Watch and just talked her ear off the entire time. I guess it amazes even me how long I can actually talk. Um, but um, we talked about plans and ideas and proposals and stuff to um, just get more work done. Um, so we, um, it was about five hours. I'm trying to like count in my head. It was about, it was about five hours. It was, yeah, because there's a time change and stuff in the meantime. But yeah, it was, it was about five hours. And so it was, it was easy going. We didn't hit a whole lot of traffic and stuff. And Chicago looked beautiful the you know, few seconds that we were uh, on Lakeshore Drive. But, um, but yeah, so that was and cool. Were, it was definitely worth it. And it was a full bus. There were people from Detroit, people from Flint. No, it was just all Flint people. And Lena came with me. She was my guest. But it was mostly, it was all, but there was a lot of people that drove up. So it was one bus for the people who were going to be on the floor audience. And then there was a whole bunch of people from Flint that drove up and Detroit that drove up. So, um, so that was pretty cool. It was a, it was a packed studio. It was full. And it was cool. And he, you know, in between segments, I mean, he'd tell jokes, he'd laugh to lighten the mood a little bit, you know. It was very friendly and it just, it was, it's always good to see people get so thrown off by this and so disgusted by this and so angry that they can't even speak. Somebody who speaks on TV gets choked up. That's good to see because, you know, then they're, they're, they're you know, that they're seeing the real human cost of this. So it was good. It and was good. Gonna, and I'm, that segment's going to air next week? Yes. Yeah. Next Thursday, I believe. So, so yeah, it's a whole hour long thing he did. And so um, it was good. It was good. I was asked to do my like fight for it speech at the end, but it, it it had taken a life of its own with the emotion. So I didn't get a chance to. And plus, I didn't I didn't feel it. You know, I didn't feel like it because there were so many sad. There was people crying and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? He's getting the message across. So I let him do it. But yeah, so I, I didn't stamp and speak. See, I don't always have to talk, um, except for right now while I'm talking about not talking. <laughs> But yeah, no, it just, it just wasn't right. It just felt good to let them, you know, and they had a lot of questions, especially for the doctor and she's from DC. So she's dealt with lead poisoning on a grand scale before. So it was good to hear from her because, you know, we hear the same old, same old that, you know, and, and, and not that she wasn't an alarmist, but she was a realist that, yeah, this is bad. This is bad. You can't bathe. You need to take care of you, and every single one of you needs to get tested. And that's another thing that we don't hear a lot here. We hear about how the children need to be tested, and they do, but there haven't been a lot of programs for adults. Um, I think Molina Healthcare and um, 
Hamilton Healthcare are doing free testing for adults this week, which is great because there's a gentleman that just came out with five, he's an, he's an adult and he has five times the toxic level of lead in his blood. And there's no reason, I mean, yes, it's going to delay and it's going to damage the brain, the brain growth of these kids. But then we also have to remember that your brain grows and develops until you're 25. Um, so then there's young adults there. And then again, I'm a shining example. I'm 37 and next Thursday, I go in for a consultation on a liver biopsy, you know, because the seizures aren't stopping, the tremors are worse, and um, the throwing up every day is less than awesome. They think that um, I've got some kind of inflammation going through my abdomen at this point in time. My body's having an allergic reaction to something, and um, it's swelling up and pushing on my organs. So me and food aren't friends. So 